All right, today I'm going to show you how to make super healthy um, vegan tacos. They even go beyond vegan because uh, for tacos, the taco shell itself is just a corn shell, and that would be fine for a vegan. But if you really wanted to eat right, you wouldn't even be eating corn, which you could look that up. I'm not going to get into it here, but corn is also something just like meat, which you should try to eliminate from your diet. Corn and wheat. So you're kind of stuck when you're like, well, I can't have uh, the taco shell. But you can get creative with nature. And um, you can definitely make tacos. using just plant-based. Now, here we have some chopped garlic. This is how we're going to start this. We're going to get a pan going, low heat. We've already warmed this pan. We're going to put just a dash of olive oil in there. And uh, like I said, the pan is already hot. We'd say warm. You don't want to I mean, this is, I don't really want to turn this into a, sh into a cooking show. It's more like a, an idea for a re taco replacement show. But uh, you never really want to drop garlic in a pan and it's like, shh, and it's like all sizzling and jumping around and burning in there because it's going to taste terrible. Yeah, you don't want to deep fry it. You just want to... Lightly saute it. And we got green onions here. Green onions. Uh, scallions. I don't know what you want to call them. And these. We can inspect. You can always do a peel off of this layer here. This top layer. If it seems to be necessary. You really want these ringlets that you use here to be nice. Fresh and clean. <laughs> Is this thing coming? Alright. Hello. We're making vegan tacos. A video? Yes. Can I go put on YouTube? Yes. Can I say hi? You can say hi. hi. Oh, hello. That's it? Hi. Hi, we get a hello? Hello. We get a hello. I have a YouTube channel yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I have a YouTube channel too. Nice. Green onion. There we go. Let's see how our garlic's doing over here. If you're nice, you should just see just a slight, <laughs> slight like bubbling next to it. That's how it should be. Very low heat. Almost like a simmer. Daddy's kitchen, nothing explodes. We got that going. Uh, you do need a lid. A lid? A lid. A lid. Because we want to keep we want to keep the moisture going here. We don't want to boil off. Sorry. Oh. I'm just taking a little. Because you want to keep the moisture going. Now, as far as tofu goes. I'm going to use one package of two. And what we do with this is we try to make with this, uh, how many ounces is this again? This is your regular, it's 19 ounce tofu. Dad. We try to make three cuts through here. Like 
like so. I'm trying to make three cuts that way. Then, across, you kind of fold the knife into the tofu like that. See, if you just push straight down, you're going to tear it. You kind of rock it down. You go across, then, coming at you, we come across this way. See how we kind of just rock it down like that. Rock it down. And we've cubed it. And you want cubes that are about that size, like dice. You know what I mean? About the size of, like, dice. And uh, that's what we've done here. As you can see, all the way through, nice, nice dice sized. Then, we go right into the pan. We're talking about moisture. You could try to press the tofu before you cut it. You leave it on like the cutting board. You put something on top of it, like another cutting board. Uh, in the sink, let's say. You put something, another cutting board on top of it. You put the tofu on a cutting board. You put another cutting board like this, let's say. And you drop it, you put that on top. Then you can take something that weighs something like this, whatever, and you can put that on top. And you leave it like that for a while, and you'll see it'll press water out of the tofu. Some people like to do that before they cook with it because they kind of like it drier. They like their recipes to be drier, you know? I really know what the words use, but drier. But during the cooking process, Depending on removing the lid or what type of uh, how hot your the, the your temperature is that you're using. I want to up the temperature now a little bit because I have that in there now. For, as far as taco shells, you you've been wondering what is this guy going to use for taco shells? Well, show you right now. Arugula. These are the taco shells. Look at how perfect that is. Nature has made taco shells for you, and you're not even aware of it. Look at them. This is organic arugula hearts, or whatever. Is it arugula? I don't, I'm not even sure. Let me look at the package. I don't want to call it the wrong thing. What does this say? It says organic. Oh, I'm sorry. It's romaine. Romaine hearts. Shows you what I know. And then what's cool is as you get towards the middle, you get like smaller and smaller ones. So you have like ones for the kids. Or like you have like these little finger food ones. Or as they get smaller, you know what they're good for? They're good for uh, dipping in your um, almond butter. There isn't a vegan out there that shouldn't have almond butter in the cupboard organic almond butter and you can uh, right from the package you can dip and eat with these well I got these all out uh, organic or not I'm going to separate them put them in a colander and I'm going to give them a nice rinse everybody always wonders what that squirty thing is for and you start messing with a lot of vegetables you understand what the sporty thing is for. And uh, we'll just let them get out of here in the corner. And yeah, those are our taco shells. And uh, obviously for a recipe like this, you want to go fresh. You want to go fresh because you want them to be crispy and crunchy like a taco shell. Now, uh, just a couple of more pointers, if I may. You're going to want to season this, and um, I would go with a uh, Celtic sea salt like this. Oh. Look it up online, do a little research. You take like a dab like that, this is your seasoning, this is your salt. Would not season with regular processed 
iodine-filled salt. It's dead. There's no nutrients, no, no medicinal or nutritional value in regular white table salt. It's a killer. But, you know, you say, well, just eliminate salt completely, but there's a lot of people that say, oh, but I got to have my... Uh, I gotta have my so I gotta have salt. I have to put some type of uh, I have to put some type of uh, you know seasoning on my food. Well, if you're that person where you just have to, I'm not really that person. But I mean, the Celtic sea salt is good for you. So every once in a while, I put a dab in what I'm eating, and uh, that's it. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna be back. There's my kombucha tea that I'm gonna drink along with this. Uh, search these out, find them, I don't know, do like a health food store visit, and uh, this brand I like, there's another Synergy or something like that brand I used to drink, and they're okay, but what I noticed with those things is, is, is that uh, they're highly carbonated, like a soda, and I didn't really like the carbonation that much, and it made it difficult to take it out and bring it somewhere. And, uh, and then open it because they would be they would explode like a soda. Whereas these you could try, I could throw them in a bag or a little cooler, transport, take them to work, bang the cooler around, whatever. And then when you decide to drink this, you open it. There's only a little bit of carbonation. But uh, live probiotic, that's what you're looking for uh, with your kombucha tea. This is a great one. Uh, I'll be back with you in a minute and uh, we'll take a look how this uh, turns out.